In this video, I'm gonna talk about why you must use an economic calendar when day trading. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, quick video, but such an important video. All the videos are designed to make you money or save you money. This will save you money if you're not doing it already. Why you must, must use an economic calendar when day trading. What is an economic calendar? First of all, let me tell you, the economic calendar is the a diary of all the announcements that are coming out related to the economy. So calendar, economic calendar for different countries or different kind of regions like EU, uh, US on its own, UK on its own, Germany on its own. And these economic announcements will be things like um, inflation, interest rates, jobs numbers, factory orders, CPI, PPI, all these kind of things that are just giving us a gauge on the economy. Now, we're not economists and we don't really care as to what the number is from a perspective of the economy. However, why do we care? If we're day trading, these numbers have potential to move the markets that we are trading. So there is hidden risk in this. So the first reason that we want to use an economic calendar is the risk, the hidden risk. If we're holding a position and we're not looking at our economic calendar, we don't know that at three o'clock UK time, we've got a big number coming out. It's potentially going to move the market. And we're in pound dollar, we're in FTSE, we're in whatever we're in. The number comes out we're going to see a potentially see a spike one way or the other and at that point in time guys we are just giving up complete control of risk you know if we're day trading you're as you're a day if you're a day trader the reason one of the reasons you're doing it is you've got a good control of the risk you've got no you haven't given the risk up overnight you can control the amount you're losing as soon as you come into a point of time where you have a binary event you completely give up the control of risk. It could spike up 200 points, it could spike down 200 points. You're gonna lose money or make money. And for me, I'm not interested in the toss of a coin. Not to say you won't potentially hold over data if you've done your analysis and you've understood and you've said, hey, you know what? This data is not that important. It's unlikely to be that much of a market impact. I'm not in too much size, I've got this. But you, to make that judgment, you need to have already looked at your economic calendar and understood exactly what is happening, what the potential kind of um, impact on your market could be and whether you want to stay in a position. Whether you want to stay in a position, trim the position. That's another possibility. Okay, the second one is, um, I'm going to put pattern here because what I mean by this is, if you, even if you accept this and you say, hey, the risk is there and I'm going to take the trade off if it comes on, the pattern of trading changes dramatically when we have big data coming out. So for example, if you come in and you've got non-farm payrolls, non-farm payrolls coming out, which is a jobs number in the US, or you've got a big interest rate announcement, likelihood is the very, very correlated markets to that so your interest rate uh, announcements and non-farm payrolls maybe you're talking about the the currency of the of the country or bonds of the country or the index of the country anything related to the country it's going to move but if it's a big number that everyone's expecting the pattern of the trade will change so even if you accepted the risk and say i'm not going to hold overnight I'll hold over this period if you know something's coming out the likelihood is the, the, the way that the market trades before that is gonna be a lot different because everyone's waiting for the number. No one wants to kind of put their money up front or no one wants to put their money down. It might be choppy, it might be quiet because people are waiting for this before they kind of put big money into the market, understandably. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're potentially gambling unless you know unless you know something about it. That's a completely different thing. So knowing that the pattern and the way the market is trading will alter when we have big, big news coming out, up and coming. Now, whether that's just in the morning or whether that's even the day before, if it's a really big number, and, a, and this is the kind of thing where you look at your economic calendar, you say, oh, there's an interest rate announcement. Then you do a little bit of research, a bit of due diligence and say, well, actually, interest rate announcement, normally it's not a big thing because we normally don't do anything, but this time, it's a 50-50. I can see on Bloomberg, it says 50% of people say we're going to raise, 50% of people say not. So it really does become interesting because there will be a lot of people watching it. When you get to a position where it's a 90% probability nothing's going to happen, 
that's when you can maybe take the risk on the pattern's not gonna change much. But when you get a situation where potentially a big market moving number that suggests the economy is changing significantly is 50-50 or there's good chance of it being one way or the other, then the pattern of the market before the announcement will change and you have to take that into account as a trader. Maybe that means you don't trade breakouts. If it's range bound before your non-farm pre -holes, maybe you don't try and look for momentum. Maybe you look for mean reversion, with stuff coming back to a VWAP. Look for extensions to short into or buy into as opposed to kind of looking for breakouts and continuations. Not necessarily, but just as an idea. And then we can, have, we can say that that might occur we could change the pattern after non-farm payroll. So if we know that we have got non-farm payrolls or whatever it may be coming up, as a day trader, we can say, okay, respect that, appreciate that. Why don't we wait until after the data and then we'll get involved with a specific breakout strategy or momentum strategy or whatever or not, as the case may be, exactly how we judge it. But knowing that this is a kind of benchmark, if you look at the day, you know, I always like to benchmark things up. up. You've got the open here. You've got the close here. Um, I might sort of categorize this as lunch, um, where it might be quiet. So I might like to be look to be extra aggressive. If I'm day, extra aggressive, excuse me, if I'm day trading here, um, maybe extra aggressive here, maybe less so here. And now I've got a new marker in that says, okay, well you've got kind of data coming out here, non-farm perils or whatever it may be. Um, I need to adjust my strategy. I need to kind of get my trades, early trades done stay out of the market, let the noise happen here, and then look for maybe a closing trade so I can plan my day a little bit more. And if you didn't have that economic calendar, even if you've already said, I'm not gonna hold over the risk, you can't plan your day as effectively as if you have the economic calendar, know what's coming up, know what everyone's looking at, know what's potentially market moving, and then structure your day or even week around that. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And that's it. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.